wanted to start with this that see, I'm uh, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a finance guy, I'm not a legal guy, I'm not a policy guy. Okay, I'm uh, just a biologist and a scientist, and I don't work on hydrogen, I don't work on fuel cell, I don't work on battery. That's not my expertise. So, um, and uh, I came here uh, for a separate reason. So I'll be very quickly. Uh, whatever minutes I have, you know, I'll talk about it. Yeah, I, 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 I know that you know uh, all the people sitting here uh, in the panel and all the audience, uh, you all, all know the, what is the threat of climate change and you discussed and now um, Mr. Shashi uh, also uh, described you know, what is needed. So I'm not going to uh, spend uh, any more bites towards this. I'll directly go uh, to my topic, and of course, I have to quote uh, my chairman, Mr. Ambani, Mukesh Ambani, and uh, who thought, and it's just true, I, and all the speakers are telling the same thing. I think the days of uh, our prosperity through fossil fuel, okay, uh, at the cost of our planet had gone, and we must transition into, um, into new energy from old energy. And uh, he also, um, early enough, recognized the fact, and I'm coming to that point, uh, you know, hydrogen versus others, as new energy um, options okay, could actually be a combination of many different diverse opportunities. And, uh, and, one of the, and one of the most attractive opportunities, most attractive options could be most efficiently leveraging photosynthesis. To convert and, 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 and not treating carbon dioxide as a liability and convert that to raw materials in the form of energy, food, feed, nutrition, and biomaterials. Now, I do not have a scope here today to talk about what I am doing to convert CO2 to all the other molecules, but I'll very quickly tell you, and depending on the time, and I can stop any time, that what, what I'm doing to convert CO2 to sustainable bioenergy. So these are, uh, quickly again to save time, these are you know, some of the challenges we are trying to address at our R&D. And, and also we want to you know, take part seriously at fourth industrial revolution, where you all know that um, amalgamation of physical, chemical, and biological world happens, and it makes significant multi-layered impact to our economy, to our business, nation, society, and of course to the individuals. And Reliance being a um, strong player in digital, uh, physical, and chemistry, we wanted to play a major role uh, in, in biology as well. And in biology, one of our focus was, uh, to start with, was algae and algae biomass. And as I told that, you know, I'm not talking about hydrogen, I'll, I'll talk about algae and algae algae biomass, and let me start with this slide very quickly as uh, to set the context right and why, why we need more, more biomass. And, uh, you know, today, and this slide you have seen maybe in you know, a hundred of times. So today's world is challenged with uh, ever increasing population, uh, resulting demand for more food, more energy, better nutrition, better environment, more water, and more biomass produced in a sustainable and innovative way can solve many of these problems. And uh, we chose algae, algae and algae biomass. Why algae? As algae offers the maximum potential to exploit the most important chemical reaction of this earth, which is photosynthesis, to provide maximum possible biomass compared to any land-based crops. And it also offers diverse opportunities from low value, high volume, fuel to high value, low volume other products like food ingredients, personal care, nutrition and health, etc. And around uh, a decade back, we have established an end-to-end -end algae technology and a large-scale cultivation and which is best in the world now. And uh, we, we, we have a diverse set of germplasm collection and a stage-gated screening procedures where we screen, high throughput screening those algae at lab, and then finally outdoors. So the problem is like for any kind of 
living organism, the challenge I face as a biologist, everything will work in the lab, but when you take them outdoor, it doesn't work. So we wanted to screen them outdoor at different level, from one square meter for pond to maximum pond size we have is 2.5 acre to get handful of strains which are resilient enough to grow at your backyard and also productive enough to give all the products what I was talking about, be it fuel, food, feed, nutrition, and biomaterials. And this is something what we have established in, in Jamnagar at you know, Gagwa, and it's an integrated algae to oil facility. As I told you, it's world's largest facility for algae to oil so far. And this is very well integrated with algae biology, biotechnology, harvesting, um, sorry, cultivation, cultivating algae like agriculture is, is the most difficult challenge. And, and the other difficulty is how do you, see, I, I don't know how many of you have seen algae on the pond. It's a very dilute green solution. So getting the biomass from the water is always a challenge. So that's harvesting and then finally converting that biomass into bio crude. We use HTL or hydrothermal liquefaction. Many of you probably heard. It's basically just a matter of minutes. You can convert any biomass to, to fuel and uh, and this, this, this is in up and running. And our, our process, algae to oil, is fully sustainable. We do not use even a single drop of fresh water. Okay. It's all salt water. Cultivation power, what we use, is relatively less. We have developed, developed and all the, you know, deployed all the process of recycling, the water and the nutrient and CO2. And it's viable as because we use all the nutrients at a stoichiometric ratio. I'm not going to all the details, but it's sustainable and viable. See, you, you can ask me if it is sustainable and viable, then what are you going to do? What is next? So as you know, I mean, it, it needs huge investment. So as a next step, we wanted to go as a modular unit of 500 acre each unit. And each 500 acre modular unit, you will have n number of those modular, modular unit to get 10,000 barrel a day. So we wanted to make 10,000 a barrel a day. That would be our first step. And uh, I'll not go through it. This is just an example how do you use automation to you know, monitor your algae. I want to you know, take just one minute. Uh, and uh, sir, you stop me anytime whenever you think that done. You raise your hand, I'll stop. At, at any. No, no, seriously. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll take one minute to show you this video as you know, I was talking, so you have to believe me, right? And I can't take all of you to Jamnagar and show my facility. So I have a one minute video to show how that algae actually looks like when you grow them. Our world runs on oil, for fuel, for food, for life. For much of human history, we have relied only on three sources of oil, plant oils, animal fats, and petroleum to meet all of our needs. Reliance has found this a fourth algae, source the in the pond. form of a billion-year-old organism, which grows 20 to 30 times faster than food crops and holds the key to solving the world's energy problem sustainably. Algae, the green the goal. Pond, we are scaling pond. up this technology at Gagwa, at near pond. Jamnagar where Reliance's flagship refinery is located. Given proximity to the refinery and coastline, CO2 and seawater are available in abundance at the site. The solar irradiance is ideal for algae cultivation. So, and uh, once you have this algae biomass, the next challenge, as I was telling you, to convert it to um, too crude, right? And the process what we use is hydrothermal liquefaction. And bear with me for one more minute to show you how do, you, how do we do hydrothermal liquefaction to convert any biomass for that matter. We started with algae, and they all, you know, municipal solid waste and other organic waste you take and convert in a matter of minute to bio crude. And the, and the efficiency is 50 to 70%. Okay, so I wanted to just show you this as well. Single biggest challenge facing humanity right now is climate change. Reliance Catalytic Hydrothermal Liquefaction, RCAT HTL, 
is a technology that addresses a challenge of climate change through conversion of waste into renewable fuel and recovering the resources. The technology turns the problem of waste into an opportunity. It converts biomass and any organic waste into drop-in liquid fuel. RCAT HTL essentially expedites the natural process of oil formation from biomass instead of millions of years as taken by nature. RCAT HTL achieves the process in a few minutes. The process is feed flexible and kinetics can be tuned to get the desired product slate. Drop-in liquid fuel can be processed in the existing refining infrastructure to produce transportation fuels adding no infrastructure cost. For the first time in the world, a large-scale HTL pilot plant was conceptualized in 2013 as part of National Alliance for Advanced Biofuels and Bioproducts. This is the feed preparation okay, section. I'm not going to, In this uh, section, show you how homogenized I mean, feed is prepared a, again, for feeding minute, to the late. system. I know the that high you pressure all pump raises the feed pressure and pressurized feed enters the heating section. Feed is heated in series of heat exchanges in a staged manner to reaction temperature. Feed at high temperature and pressure enters Anyway, so uh, you know, I stopped that video. Just wanted to tell you that uh, you know, currently, uh, what we can do. Uh, I mean, it's a small pilot unit, but we can right produce now. about it's one and a half barrel a day. Okay, and now we are planning to uh, go to the next scale, and uh, not just with algae, as I told you, it could be from uh, you know any other for any other biomasses as well. Sorry. Okay. And um, I know it's, it's already late, you know, 5 o'clock, so um, I'll take 45 more seconds, though I have a few more slides. As, as a biologist, I cannot stop telling you that as for biomass, productivity is the key factor, right? If the productivity is 10 today, and if I make it 100 tomorrow, I solve most of the problems. Now, how do, how do I do as a biologist? How do I make, make you more productive? How do I make an algae, an organism more productive? Okay? Using biology, can I stop my algae to die? Okay? And that exactly you have done. So algae dies. You die. I die. Why? It's not because, like, like you know, you, you, are, you, are, you don't have food. You have everything, but you still die. So there are mechanisms, right, what, what happens, okay? And I know what happens. So that exactly you have done, this is, this is called delayed programmed cell death. So in every cell, God or someone writes a certificate that you will die after this time. And there are some other mechanisms where you can stop that. That's what we have done. We have enhanced defender against death and you could see the red line, okay, where I have given that gene, that guy still, you know, keep growing. That's number one. And the second is, each of us, anytime, okay, now I'm talking, I'm stressed. You are stressed. Everyone is stressed all the time. You don't know. And when we are stressed, what happens? Our DNA gets damaged. DNA actually gets damaged all the time, right? And that's what we die. But DNA gets repaired as well. That's what, like, you know, I'm 60 years old and I'm still living. The DNA started, you know, getting damaged when I was a kid. So, as because I have a repair enzyme, which repairs as well. So what I have done, I have taken that repair enzyme, put it in algae again. Now this, this algae, when he's stressed with UV, with, you know, hot, with cold, okay, his DNA is damaged, but it's repaired, repaired, repaired. So those are the synthetic biology mechanisms we have introduced in algae. Now algae can grow, my algae can grow much faster. My algae will not die easily. My algae will not get stressed easily. And it will continue to give me much more productivity to make sure 
to make even algae 2 oil as reality. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. <laughs>